Hi Gita, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, first of all, can you tell us about heel fisheries? Is it only in SIA? Hi everyone. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. yes, we can hear perfectly. Great. Um, so yeah, uh, heel fisheries, um, it stands for Healthy Ecosystem and Alternative Livelihood. Basically, it's a collaborative project that is developed jointly uh, by Lingkar Temu Kabupaten Lestari, which is a district association, um, and the young professionals um, in SIAP, as well as Agrapana Bio, an R&D technology company. And it's focusing on trying to basically provide solution to peatland fire problem, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the district of SIAP. And um, I just heard um, all of you talking about no green thumb. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is something that is also experienced uh, by the people of Siak. They don't need um, to the act of becoming a farmer. They mm. actually like to be called a fisherman instead. Mm. So they love fish better than planting, so sort of ah. speak. And that's why one of the entry points that we try to provide alternative livelihood in peatland area in the Siak district is through identifying native fish species um, on peatland and trying to find what are the local tradition and how does the people usually utilize the fish mm -hmm. and one of the things that we found at that time is the people used to actually steam the fish to get the benefit for immune booster or mm -hmm. if you just gave labor for example they mm -hmm. use it for speeding up the recovery process as well as post-surgery remedy as well mm. now from that theory from that local tradition uh, we pair up with the R&D support from Agrapana Bio and found out actually if you build the right type of accessible technology the community can actually extract high protein quantity and high albumin quantity that is actually a very good agent for healing wound and also immune booster and scientifically proven mm -hmm. to actually create a better standard when it's taken from fish that's kept in a healthy peat. Um, so it's almost like we are protecting our immune system mm -hmm. while at the same time protecting the peatland ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's a truth to that. Um, as that was the first thing during pregnancy and pros, postpartum that the doctors gave me um, it was uh, to heal from the C-section surgery was a whole lot of uh, ikan gabus or uh, what is ikan gabus again in, 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 um, in, in English? But snake it's, head it's, fish. That's right. So snake head fish uh, mm. specific extract um, to, to consume because that's where the high protein and high albumin comes from. So that's amazing. And what I mean, what are the odds that you know peatlands just happen to be so uh, so useful in in, in you know in creating uh, the ecosystem for the fish as well? Now, how important is the peat ecosystem though as a whole for Indonesia? Mm -hmm. um, I. I I normally would say that peat represents biophysical importance. It's one of the greatest carbon storage out there. Mm -hmm. um, it has the potential to actually provide solution for um, our goal for climate mitigation and adaptation mm -hmm. uh, as a whole. Um, beyond that, peat actually has historical benefit as well. It actually leads back to the way that our culture is being shaped. So by protecting the peat, it's not only that we're protecting our ecosystem, we're also protecting our history and our culture and it's protecting our civilization. Um, so if you're following, you know, ancient map mm -hmm. that is tracking the way that the peat is being established you can follow it through all the way to even when indonesia was still an entire continent in itself so this is something that um, we shouldn't be taking for granted uh, people um, sometimes have difficulties in understanding what peatland is uh, while indonesia is actually one of the country that is significant that has significant peat area which um, for us this is something that uh, we should be really proud of. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Now, um, Gita, how about um, you know the heel fisheries contribution for people who actually mm. lives um, around um, the ecosystem itself? Now, aside to the um, you know cons uh, conserve uh, the uh, environment itself, now is there any economy impact maybe on that? 
So um, basically, the way that Heal Fisheries is being constructed is to help community that lives within and surrounding deep feed ecosystem. Since the big fire incident in 2015, the government have actually issued strict regulation mm -hmm. when it comes to conserving and protecting feed. Mm -hmm. So good job in terms of regulation. But for the community themselves, um, their original livelihood is to plant palm oil or acacia. And if mm. you plant palm oil or acacia, you'd have to drain the peat. And when the peat ah. is dry, then this becomes a big fire hazard. So okay. any little um, amount of fire spark, it can cause smoldering fire within the peat okay. that you cannot actually put down by water bombing because it's mm. within <laughs> itself. Um, you cannot put it out. So in a way, this becomes such a big problem for the community and what we intend to do is trying to find at least something that can increase their uh, livelihood in comparison to what they used to uh, have if they were planting palm oil or acacia. Mm -hmm. Now, from the two villages that have been working with Hill Fisheries to date, we're calculating the increase of 300% in terms of income wow. compared between if they were to sell their palm oil and right now, selling the fish directly to our supply chain. So this is something that we are also trying to expand within the next ten, uh, two, three years. For example, we wanted to go beyond the two village and maybe include more fire prone villages around Siak district in order to actually offer the same benefit for um, the livelihood of the fishermen and the farmers. Um, I'm one of those people who, who are always interested in health supplements. So health fisheries produce health mm. supplements. Um, can you tell us what benefits of the supplement itself? So uh, this is something that we are um, actually on um, a trial run. Um, and as was mentioned um, uh, by one of you, uh, this is something that uh, already are in the market. Um, so the two highest content of snakehead fish that we currently are producing is um, the protein and also the albumin. And the health supplement is actually uh, mixing the albumin. Um, you can see the process here. Um, we extract the liquid albumin, we ha dry it so that it becomes powder. And from that powder, we actually combine it with other herbs uh, that are also pit friendly. And at the end, it produces three major um, effects, hopefully. So one is immune booster. The second one is to speed up healing process and the third it becomes actually a carrier ag agent for other supplement and other um, medicine that uh, somebody is taking so it's also providing additional therapeutic process for people that's healing from um, immunocompromised condition mm. uh, we have some <coughs> statement right now that um, people that are recovering from cancer or long covid for example mm -hmm. are actually in need of this type of substance um, in a way to speed up their uh, digestion process over a lot of the treatment that they're currently mm. getting so overall those are the three things that we are aiming for um, again um, this is something that right now we are in the process of getting the national uh, distribution license. So fingers crossed, mm -hmm. it'll be available um, beyond compassionate use um, anytime soon. Right. Wow, right. that's certainly great. Um, you know, get that. Uh, for me, Alam Cyclosat is also um, to develop another product from Pete. What kinds of product are you developing now? Um, so right now we are looking at uh, different types of herbs that uh, can actually also uh, be produced directly by mm -hmm. the smallholders. Uh, we're looking at things like uh, pineapple as well, since Ooh. pineapple is actually a good way to prevent fire from jumping between one mm. peatland area to another peatland area. And it's also, again, based on local tradition. Mm -hmm. And um, partners uh, are working with us to look at pineapple as a source uh, for our next textile uh, material. Right. So this is something that we are trying to promote looking at local tradition and combining it with accessible technology but at the end of the day it produces at least intermediate value added product so that at the end of the day the value and the income that it generates for the farmers that is within our supply chain is at least 
200 and 300 percent more so that wow. it becomes really an alternative for them okay it's now, so it is right now um Gita, uh, we know that heel fishery is chosen as one of the mit solver winner in uh 2021 2021 and actually got the extra prizes in 2022 um showcase right so uh, can you elaborate with us more and tell us more about that yeah, so um, it's a very, <laughs> it's an honor for us. Uh, we honestly just submitted at the time of having, we're like looking at uh, opening up vacancies at that time. And yeah. we thought, oh, if we were to do a screenshot of an MIT website with our application, it will attract more people. Um, little did we know that out of the 1,800 applicants from 140 <coughs> something countries, mm -hmm. uh, we got selected as one of the solver uh, for resilience ecosystem category. What it means to be selected is basically looking at that as an opportunity for us to connect um, to a larger network under the MIT Solve um, umbrella. And at the same time, it also means that we are um, provided with unrestricted budget so that we can support our R&D and support more flexible uh, financing needs between 2021 and 2022. Um, and uh, what you see right now is actually another um, opportunity that was provided to us, which is to pitch during the closing plenary. Mm. And this pitch have actually resulted into a more partnership uh, with a multiple department in MIT because we are currently actually seeking for action-based research partners. We're looking mm. for funders that are um, interested in actually working with us to expand innovation centers across Indonesia and we're also looking at um, different opportunity to boost this narrative even more so um, yeah uh, this is something that for us is uh, still a bit surreal we are the third um, representative from Indonesia in 2016 it was Ruang Guru in 2019 it was Mycotech and in 2021 uh, it's Alam Siak Lestari in particular Hill Fishery so very proud to also bring Indonesian name um, to the global uh, stage you know, you you basically have just shown how uh, resilient Indonesia can be if we know where to look, especially in terms of sustainability. Now, uh, out of curiosity, what is your outlook? I mean, what you do is not only beneficial for your you know, your farmers and your supply chain, but it is also very sustainable in terms of uh, you know in terms of managing and mitigating climate change. You know, in the future, um, are you planning to you know? How has the government not, is the government supporting you in, be, in going to be able to, um, you know, how do I say? Um, More for copy, yeah, yeah, copy yeah. what you did right now and you do to other peatland areas, not just in Siap, but also in all of the regions because right. there is a lot of potential if we, you know, if we rehabilitate the peats and it becomes such a great, great uh, initiative for Indonesia to be able to mitigate carbon emissions. So um, actually, Hill Fisheries came about uh, because the District of Sea already committed to a grid vision. Mm. So part of the reason why it become a collaborative project, and we've gotten you know investors that are um, investing in us in early days, off takers that are giving us long term contract, is because we are operating within a district that have been committed since 2015. Yeah. They've issued regulation, they have issued planning documents to support this type of enabling conditions, and they've also uh, provided in-kind support to date to Alam Siak Lestari. And this is the type of ecosystem that we would love to actually replicate across Indonesia yes. right now um, as part of the Sustainable District Association or Lingkar Temu Kabupaten Lestari. Um, my goal is also to expand what's happening in Siak beyond um, just uh, Seattle, but right now, for example, we're expanding to the second operation center, which is in Sintang in West Kalimantan. Mm -hmm. And the plan is within the next years, um, we're also going to Sulawesi. Um, in total, in Indonesia, we've identified around 79 uh, particular districts that are heavily um, uh, heavy on peat as well as in forest area. Mm -hmm. And if we're concentrating on those 79 um, location, we can actually protect majority of our peatland ecosystem. Um, in a way, the three key that um, we are aiming for 
um, in the future in terms of getting enabling policy and enabling conditions from the government are one looking at what type of regulatory framework should be there and we believe this include you know land use utilization this also includes um, ease of doing business for small medium scale enterprises especially to boost between the micro ecosystem into small to medium size and it also includes actually getting sustainable procurement embedded into public mm. procurement of the government itself. Right. Mm. Um, hopefully, using this three um, umbrella, we can actually provide a new business model on conservation, especially in peat, especially the ones that are benefiting the community directly. Our the type of company that we're building in Alam Siak Lestari is also something that the government um, right now in Siak interested to replicate because it is actually a community-based enterprise mm -hmm. where the two village within our supply chain is actually all stakeholders. And um, in year seven, uh, what we've agreed with the investors is that the majority of the shares within Alam Siak Lestari would belong directly to the community. So this is a type of new investment that Indonesia um, should be interested in um, embarking even more. Mm -hmm. And we've seen um, the potential, uh, the 2018 study, for example, in British Council uh, and Bapenas have shown that Indonesia have more than 300,000 social enterprises across the country. So we're not starting from scratch. Uh, mm -hmm. I really believe that this is something realistic that Indonesia can actually push through together. Okay. Mm. Now you did uh, mention about investors. And I was like, uh, I really want to know: is there an, were there any obstacles, um, you know, in the um, in the beginning uh, regarding the uh, investors um, that you can you were actually trying to find at that time, or what's your hope to the investors? Um, in terms of challenges, I think the the most helpful part, um, like was mentioned, is because we are operating in a location that already have a sustainable commitment um, and this actually attracts the right kind of investors yeah. because sometimes we think about investors and it's about invest the investors curating us as a business but when we're building a community-based enterprise like this and what when we actually want to really focus on providing impact while also becoming a viable business model we're also curating the type of investors mm -hmm. that are willing uh, that we are willing to actually invite within the company setting so this is also a balance that needs to be um, really uh, guarded um, in a way we really want this to be community centered and um, only by working with the right type of investors um, can we achieve this and we're very happy right now actually uh, yesterday um, earlier um, and earlier this month, the Ministry of Investment alongside Smesco Indonesia and Ministry of Cooperative and Small Medium Scale Enterprises have actually launched the first draft of Sustainable Investment Guideline mm -hmm. uh, in which Alam Siak Lestari is also featured as one of the um, almost like poster child mm -hmm. for sustainable investment <laughs> modeling. And we hope that this is something that the G20 momentum and the momentum can actually even more escalate in the future to showcase that, that we are actually embarking on a new phase of right. uh, getting investment it's no longer the traditional way that yeah. the investors is telling the company what to do it's actually about collaboration and working together in order to achieve impact while also achieving profit right i want to clap my hands up so much. i know yeah. Yeah. congratulations oh, <laughs> Congratulations and thank you so much because what you do is, of course, I hope you get to rehabilitate all of the peatlands here in Indonesia because of the benefits that Indonesia could really, really use. And we have a lot of, you know, we had a, we have a lot of peatlands and perhaps peat, drained peatlands that could be restored. And thank you so much for your efforts, Magita. Thank you so much for your insight and the information. And congratulations to Heal Fisheries and hopeful for the better future. Bye. Bye. Thank you for having me.